Inside we have one, two, three, four, five, maybe six. Six visible broken teeth that I can see. Black wire was pinched. It was not pressed down like it's supposed to be. And that's all I have noticed so far, taking the gearbox apart. Oh, almost forgot. The uh, bushings were, let's see if nothing will fall here, popped out and a little bit, um, they were just kind of freeloading here. So we've got some uh, material removed. I can't, can't forget to say that. Look at all this metal in here. This is obvious. We're going to talk about catastrophic damage here because that's what this is. I don't know how well you can see that there are no teeth right in this area on the spur gear. They're just gone. Um, there's probably more damage underneath for my guess, but looking at this, this right here is a sign of you have your beveled pinion incorrect. Um, you can have it over shimmed on the bevel, or you can have the motor with the pinion pushing the bevel up and creating this kind of wear here. Uh, so we look at the bevel and boom, look at that. See all that gray stuff? That's the, the uh, metal shavings mixing in with the uh, grease sometimes, because usually the grease is not a pure gray like that. See here, the grease is kind of a little bit green and yellow. Uh, so this is shavings. We see it here, here, and here. All right, got my nice gloves on. Let's go ahead and just look and see what we've got. First things first, I'll pull out the piston. And wow, piston does not look to be in great shape. Uh, we have indention right here on the pickup. As you can see, the indention there, that is very bad. So the tooth that was like this has now been indented backwards. So when that happens, um, that's the new starting point. And that's going to happen to all these teeth. And eventually you won't have any plastic. You see how black this is getting. So um, when you have a lot of black like this, it means that there wasn't grease in the area that it was rubbing. Uh, the rails on this do not look like they were greased at all. In here, they look like they were just rubbing the whole time, possibly. Um, so, the back looks fine, but this piston is pretty much shot from now on, because if you continue to use this, uh, because it's got a new starting point, this piston will become broken. The teeth will. Looking at the O-ring, it's looking uh, kind of crusty. And what I mean by that, it's kind of uh, getting to where it's going to crack. This grease and stuff is uh, not the greatest. And usually this gear grease, this lithium grease, you're not going to want to put... Um, I think that's what it's called, I can't remember the exact word. This stuff here is going to affect your O-ring. Uh, so. It's a good idea not to mix greases here. Okay, so set that aside. You can see the tappet plate looks in pretty good condition. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the uh, tappet plate spring. Let's pull this out and set this aside. All right, and the air nozzle does not have an O-ring. It's kind of obvious. Ooh, look at this. It looks like just grease from the piston head. And there is the hole for blowback on this gun. And then there is a notch here. So that it fits in here and they try to make this unique. All 
All right, now we're looking at the sector gear. We're missing one tooth from the sector gear right here. So what I'm going to do is steal the shims. And this will be considered uh, broken now, not usable anymore. So I'm going to set that aside. And we can see more than half of the teeth from the spur is gone more than half. Um, looking we see another set of, of looks like a tooth right there and the bushing looks like it has come up a lot. All right, So we're going to go ahead and pull up the uh, bevel. The bevel has some teeth in it um, as far as condition wise it's in pretty good condition. Now when you want to take something like this, this gear um, you're going to clean it up, of course, but when you take a gear like this, get that tooth out, and you don't know how well it's, how well it is now, these teeth could be uh, cracked. Um, there could be a hairline crack inside one of them. And what you're going to have to do is put this in a gearbox and hand cycle it uh, to see how durable the uh, teeth are. And what I mean by that is you rotate uh, the gears, of course. Um, this gear looks fine. This looks reusable. The bevel teeth do not look too bad. Although there are a little bit of markings, but it's not too bad. So that is somewhat probably reusable. Now here's the anterosal latch. Looks to be in great shape. And we see another tooth there for the spur gear, or we call it step gear, whichever you want to call it, I guess. All right, now looking at this, see here the grease is kind of a yellowish green, and in between you can see how gray this is. That's a lot of teeth to be missing. Now what I want to talk about is the catastrophic damage here. What made this catastrophic damage? I have owned uh, quite a bit of G&Gs and, and I never had catastrophic damage with the gears. I've actually uh, used G&G gears with an M190 spring um, before and never had an issue with that. Where is the catastrophic damage coming from? Maybe a tooth is weak and say it go goodbye. That's a possibility, but when you look at this, these brass-like <coughs> bushings, they are not very good material, not very stable, um, solid. I'm going to have to clean this up. Look at that grease on there. It's just holding it stuck. happens though is the this one you can definitely tell is not completely uh, circular anymore it's got like an oval shape to it and what happens is as the gear is in there <laughs> looks like it has shaved off a little bit of it too as the gears in there and it's rotating um, it doesn't rotate perfectly uh, aligned straight anymore um, on its axis. Now it's got like a crooked axis so as this rotates around look at that <laughs> still still cycles because there's barely little notches on the teeth there but uh, well hand cycles I don't think it'll, it'll cycle the spring very well um, so what I'm getting at is this kind of moves a little bit and there's not a lot of play between the teeth so if this is moving on its own axis now it's not the axis it was before it comes in crooked and it gets caught right here at the teeth it just like stops but the gearbox once being ran by the motor doesn't know to stop the gears just get caught right there 
And so it's still got this momentum, so it just powers through it, boom, and it takes off teeth. And that's what uh, generally happens. If you look at the back of the piston here, there's no, there's no wear on it. So the gears didn't go back far enough to uh, hit the back of the piston. The spring's not powerful enough. What more likely happened, especially looking at this bushing right here, is that you can see there's definitely wear there that has pushed it upwards. This is not on its axis, and as it's going around, um, the teeth get caught because they're coming in at an angle now. And as they get caught, it's still trying to power through, so pff, it just strips. Because it, if you were to cycle this by hand, you would, you would notice it get caught like that. You would be cycling it and feel, oh, that's kind of stiff, that's stuck. But when the gearbox is going with the, the battery, like a LiPo or anything, um, it's got that momentum, it's just going to take out the teeth. Um, so that's what happened here. You can see that the swirl marks around the uh, gear. I'm not sure if that's now since I started doing that. Uh, I'd have to pay attention to the video. But if that was there previously, then this is probably shimmed too close to the uh, spur gear. And when it does move, it's just grinding down into the spur. Um, so we see here a tooth has gone here. And I think, from looking at this, it's kind of hard to say, when one side loses a lot of teeth uh, versus another side, I think this is, the, this is the point where it got really hard to turn, is that tooth right there. And so when it broke, it's continued to move and just kept taking these out. At least that's the best way I can I can describe it for you there. Um, but everything else looks good on here. There's a lot of shavings. Um, so this is no good. This is no good. And there's the shim. Now in some cases these shims are no good too. I'm going to tell you. Shims, they get grinded on when it's too tightly like this. And it does change their, um, this looks really bad, just change their spec size, their dimension, uh, their height, I want to say. Um, so you'd have to check that uh, when putting it in. Uh, you may assume that it's 0.2 millimeter, and now it's like a 1.7 or something less than that. Uh, also, they flatten out and... Uh, from from the excessive friction, the heat is just pushing down, you know. Um, it can, in some cases, I'm not joking, it can create noise on your bushings or bearings, whichever they can gra grasp to. And that all depends on how much the uh, shim is actually damaged. So I'm actually telling you the shim can be damaged. Because I've seen it before, it does happen and it can affect the noise. You may not notice it as easily, um, but it definitely does affect noise. There's no joke there. Uh, so the first thing that needs to be done to this gearbox, definitely pop those out, uh, switch out the two gears, and I think we'd be set. Um, for some reason, they didn't include uh, the ends here, so I would probably have to clip this and put my own, or rewire the whole thing. Um, so this here needs to be set down into down into the uh, place here. So whoever put this thing together, the gun, maybe in the shop, there's a tooth in the way. That doesn't help either. So this has got to be cleaned out. Uh, but as you can see here, there's something else noticeable. This air nozzle. I don't know how well I could show that on camera, but one of the edges is uh, caved in compared to the other two. That could just be from uh, some possible pre-engagement. Um, not really. If you're looking at this, not really. If it was really hard to cycle through this, this would go first. This is plastic. 
Uh, the trick with metal and plastic, whichever is more durable is going to go first. Uh, this would have gone. So we know it's down to the bushings. And that's just a, d a direct result of this. So this is trash. This is this is trash. Catastrophic damage from these bushings. I've said this before. I've made videos of this before. These bushings are unreliable. Um, I've seen a lot worse. And it really, if you put this in the gearbox and you close and you remove the grease and you cycle this, you'd probably hear it off balance, and it would scrape and so forth. Um, Right here you can tell, even when I hold it by my, my finger, I can tell it's moving a little bit. So um, simply that's what it's down to. That's really bad. It's a bad design idea. So if you put some new bushings in here, solid, change out those two gears, check that, that bevel gear, um, you could be uh, having this gun go right back up, you have to change the piston though too. That's uh, for sure. The only way this piston would be reusable, and I mean the teeth after are not too bad bent, you'd have to refix the starting point because the starting point is now in a bad position.